I've always loved rocks, minerals, fossils, that type of thing. For as long as I can remember, I've liked them and collected them if ever I found something that was affordable. Or as I've got older, I just liked it, even if it wasn't affordable. So yeah, um, through the years I've collected lots of specimens. Um, they're nothing, they're not museum quality or anything, but to me they're special and they're, I'm sure I'll show them to you today, the, a few of them I've selected. Um, I'm hoping you'll agree that they look pretty nice. Um, so yeah, it's only the last two years that I've started collecting my own rocks, going out and uh, out back and collecting my own rocks and then polishing them. So this has uh, been going on for, yeah, well, 40 plus years. If I saw something at a spot meet I liked, I'd buy it. Uh, if I was at a mineral show or something, I'd, I'd saw something I like, I'd buy it as well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll quickly just run through a few of the specimens that I've collected that I really like, and I hope you like them too. Also, you know what's coming. If you like this channel, my YouTube channel, I really appreciate um, likes and subscribes, and especially comments as well. I'm enjoying the comments that people make. Uh, and especially with this lot of specimens, if you hear me say something that is wrong, I'm no geologist, I'm a sign writer by trade, uh, I'd love to hear you tell me what it really is. But yeah, um, if you could like and subscribe, that gives me encouragement to keep going. Thank you. G'day, and welcome to my channel. All right, let's get started. This first one, this is an amethyst stalactite. So what happens is the stalactite grows down. Uh, this is the stalactite area there. Uh, grows downwards and then amethyst crystals start to form on the outside. So this is a slice of what would have been a considerably longer amethyst stalactite. Beautiful. So this is a fossilized trilobite. Um, it would have just been enclosed in a rock uh, with something showing. I guess that someone thought, hang on, there's something in there and start chipping away and very carefully chipping away until they exposed this fossilized trilobite. There's lots of different types of trilobites. You don't, you normally just see the flat part, but this has the, what would you call them, antenna, I guess, sticking out there. Yeah, someone put a lot of work into that. This is a piece of azurite. Well, it's a rock with azurite on the surface. Crystals of azurite. Um, and again, beautiful. Right, yeah, this. This is a megalodon, a fossilised megalodon tooth. So... <laughs> Imagine a shark that had that in its mouth. Could really do some damage. These are quite common. Um, they're not cheap, but you see quite a lot of them. Megalodon tooth. Now this one's really quite common as well. This is uh, pyrite. But, uh, well... <laughs> Who could look at that and not want a piece of it? It looks fantastic. It's actually called Fool's Gold. Uh, you can see why. Beautiful. Now, I'm sure anyone interested in rocks knows Labradorite. Um, just the stuff that it does with light, reflecting off it is amazing. The colours that come out. This was a piece I bought of the spot meat before I started polishing my own. Nice big piece, I liked it. So it went home with me. Right, oh, now this. These are fossilized cephalopod, I guess you'd call them, shells. Um, so yeah, that's the shell, uh, much like, um, say, a nautilus, so it has a shell and then the squid sort of pokes out this end, his legs, and he squirts himself along. So this is uh, fossilised squid shells, I guess you'd say. Again, something I saw, liked, and bought. Now this 
is a rock <laughs> with opal in it. I bought this in Queensland probably about 10 years ago. Just fell in love with it. Magnificent colours. Again, who wouldn't? <laughs> Very nice. So this is a type of ammonite. Um, you, ammonites are really quite common. You get this ridged sort of version. You get a flat version as well. I'll show you a flat version in a second. Uh, this has been polished, obviously, but yeah, well done. I like it. Yeah, and ammonites, you can get them up to, you know, a metre and a half wide. So it must be a baby one, I don't know. This is the other type of ammonite you see. Again, this is obviously polished. Uh, more fossils in the middle of it there as well. Yeah, very nice. Now this is called kyanite. Beautiful blue crystals. I don't know where they come from. I don't know how common they are. <laughs> I just saw it and liked it, so I bought it. Kyanite. This is a piece of raw copper, so copper straight out of the ground. Uh, usually it goes a dull, rusty colour, can go green. Uh, so I clear coated this. You get about you get about probably five minutes before it starts to go off once you've uh, scrubbed it. So I scrubbed it and then quickly clear coated it to keep that copper look. Okay, now this is nice. This is something called tiger iron. So it's tiger eye. You can see the tiger eye in there, but it's mixed in with bands of iron. Uh, so yeah, rather than just tiger eye, this is tiger iron. Right, a fossilized dinosaur tooth. I tried to find out what sort of dinosaur it was from and the nearest I could find on the internet was something called a Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus. Uh, so that's what I'm going with. If anyone else knows any different, please let me know. Amazing, hey? Millions and millions of years old, well, the dinosaur was, would be. This is what fascinates me with rocks and fossils. A lot of them have a real story to tell. They would have been chomping down on something a hundred odd million years ago. Ah, now this is one that I found. This is a uh, mookite from up in Mooka Creek. Um, the club I was in had special permission to go mining there, to go collecting. There's a commercial mine, there's a few commercial mines out there in Mooka Creek that mine this mooka and that gets sent off to China and then gets sent back to us with a big profit attached. Um, but yeah, this piece, it sort of has, most of the colours has got yellow and mauve and blacks and whites and brick red. So yeah, that I just thought it was too nice to mess with, I'll just keep it as a specimen. Here's a fossilised fish. No idea how old it is, no idea what it is, just I saw it, I liked it, I bought it. It's good, isn't it? This is amethyst. It would have been part of a geode by the looks of what's on the other side of it at one point, but probably all smashed when they tried to split it. So yeah, magnificent stuff, isn't it? Beautiful. Amethyst. This is a rather large agate that I bought from my local wholesaler. Uh, already cut like that. Um, let me just wet it and I'll show you. It looks, they look a lot better when they're wet. So yeah, maybe I'll polish that one day. What I liked about this one though, was the other side. Lots of really cool stuff going on there. So it may just stay as it is, I think. I, I like that. That's an agate. 
Right, here's something different. This is called amber calcite. So calcite, uh, quite common. But in this formation, these long, thin needle type crystals, it's called amber calcite. Now these, these are a couple of boulder opals, which I cut in half and polished and I think you can see the opal in them. Yeah, I think I bought these for $2 each. I was quite impressed that you could see opal in the middle of them. Right, now when I got this, the guy told me it was fossilised seaweed and I believed him for years and years thinking that's fossilised seaweed. But it turns out it's actually dendrites um, created by minerals uh, seeping into the rock. So this would have been, it's sandstone I guess, so probably layers of sandstone and then minerals have creeped up in between the cracks of the sandstone and created these dendrites. And this is quite unique. This is uh, gypsum, but formed like this, they call it uh, desert rose. <laughs> One crappy looking rose. But no, um, it's amazing how it forms. They, this is the, the crystal structure and they just come out of all sorts of angles. Fantastic stuff. Looks like it's been made by an idiot. Desert rose, gypsum. Now this is a fossilised conifer, uh, a conifer tree, part of a conifer tree that's been fossilised. Um, I saw it, I liked it, it was coming home with me. Now I do have quite a lot of geodes in my collection. Uh, this is not your typical sort of geode shape, but it is a geode, it's actually... Oh, there we go. So yeah, it's a geode filled with crystals. And I like the way it goes back together to be almost unnoticeable where the join is. <laughs> I like it. Now this, to me at least, is interesting. Again, when our club was up at Mooka Creek collecting mookite, I found a piece of mookite and I had this hole going through it. And I thought, well, that's weird. I'll take that and I cut a piece off, polished it, and that hole was naturally there. But when I cut it, um, I found out why that hole was there, and that's because there's a cone shell fossilized in there. So, mookite, they say formed, was it 160 million years ago, something like that? So 160 million years ago, this poor old cone shell was burrowing through the mud, which would become mookite one day got stuck and became part of the rock. Quite neat, I like it. And this is something different, this is a tektite. So what happens is a meteor comes to earth, crashes into the ground, and the earth surrounding where it crashes into gets turned to glass because of the heat and all these bits go splashing out. And this is one of the droplets that have splashed off a meteor impact. A tektite. Right, now this is one of the more expensive pieces I have in my collection. This is a mammoth tooth. Um, <laughs> amazing what's going on there. Uh, so yeah, what, I didn't actually pay for this. So what happens is I'll do work for a fella I know and rather than pay me for the complete job, you'll part pay me with uh, rocks or minerals or fossils. So yeah, this is a mammoth tooth. Amazing, isn't it? Now this is, I guess, quartz. Um, quite a unique shape. There are some quartz, I think they call them Japan Law Quartz. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is Japan Law Quartz or not. It's quite 
expensive and rare Japan Law Quartz. Um, I didn't pay a lot for this. But I measured that angle there and it's exactly what you'd expect from Japan Law Quartz. Whether it is or not, I don't know. This is the inside of a Thunder Egg. So I bought this already cut but it wasn't polished. So a Thunder Egg would look like that on the outside. It was already cut, I just, all I did was polish it. Kind of looks like a dancing fat horse to me. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. This, I don't know, I don't know what this is. Again, I liked it, I bought it. <laughs> I probably asked but then forgot what they told me what, what it is, but it's quite nice, isn't it? Lots of little crystals and they, they fall off as well. It's quite brittle. This is an agate that's been sliced. Uh, nice crystals in the middle. These look a lot better when you hold them up to light. Uh, so I will do that with the next one. Sliced agate. All right, this is the last one. <laughs> that light doesn't work very well on this one. Um, a piece of agate sliced, or an agate sliced. Uh, what I'll do is I'll hold it up to the light for you to get an idea of how it looks lit up. Quite nice, I reckon. So there you have it. A few of my favourite specimens. I hope you like them. I know I sure do. <laughs> See you next time.